Hey, hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation in the afterlife with Princess Diana. Okay, so I never know. Should I call her Lady Diana, Princess Diana? I can just call her Diana. <laughs> How about that? Let's let her come in. I feel her energy. She always looks so, so blue to me. And to me, that feels like just this energy of true to yourself, being true to yourself and the integrity and the alignment and her, her life. It feels as though to me, the conversation she and I have had um, over the course of our Above Life channel, where you can see on the playlist more with her, have been so insightful into the fact that this is a woman who lived her life to the best she could to be true to herself. She loved her children. She cared deeply about her family and her country. And yet in being true to herself and not being willing to accept the status quo, the infidelity, the arrangement that was her marriage, let's say, she got a lot of hate and backlash and all sorts of targeting and yet still represents an energetic of decency and compassion and loving energy, being in service, being a, a voice or speaking truth is a part of the energetic that's always been present when she has come through, okay? So today I'm gonna to ask her about the topics of forgiveness and grief. Hello, yes, okay, so she shows me William right away. She says, one step away. Isn't that something? One step away, she says. So, okay, so we see William. And, okay, so I see a huge separation between William, when she sees William, there's a connection to England and to his father and to the monarchy, of course. And then there's a, a separation and kind of the sadness energetically, which makes sense in the brain too, but I can feel the sadness energetically when, when I then, I then look to see where Harry is, right? Where is Harry? And she is sharing to each his own path. Oh, oh this is going to be one of those channelings. Okay. All right. Okay. I got you. I got you. So there's going to be a lot of empathic energy coming through. And you are watching here on Above Life Channel. You're empathic. That's why you're here. You feel and sense. That's why you're drawn to the energy because this isn't just about conversation or information or interview stuff or data you can look up online. Mm -mm. We go real here and real is in our feeling spaces and our hearts. So open up your heart to be able to receive what feels true for you in the context of what she is sharing energetically. And with the Royal family and with the information that she is sharing, just know that it comes from this overarching theme, not just for them, but for all families, for all women. Mm -hmm in the circumstances that she is in or was in in her lifetime that you, my dear, who is watching this can relate to. So it's coming very hard. So I'm just gonna speak as the emotion is coming in, the feeling, thought feeling energy, okay? So all right, to each his own path. She says, there is a great, there appears to be a great deal of loss with Harry and the sadness around him um, and his feeling of losing family. He always loved his grandmother and his grandfather very, very, very much. And nothing can change or replace that. It's just, it, it just is there. And there's a lot, he, she says there's a lot of respect as well on his part that he has for the, his grandparents is what he's talking about them like a family, which is kind of, she's talking about them like a family, which is kind of nice, isn't it? That's a little warm and fuzzy, I think. All right. And in the context of a mother, from one mother to another mother, makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay. So 
is this where the grief comes in and the loss or is this where the forgiveness comes in both she's like choose your battles she says these th oh it's very hot you guys this is very ascended it's like princess diana on archangel vibrational energy radio <laughs> so it feels very highly ascended mastery a lot of light light a little bit of light pink almost palladian like energy palladian energy my star seeds we got any star seeds out there hey hi nice to see you shout out to the star seeds and the blue energy that Archangel Michael, protective energy, this guard, guardian energy. She feels very protective over Harry, very, very much. And it's not that she doesn't feel protective over William, but they are on different paths. And she says, it is difficult to traverse both of these at the same time. And yet they are often together. They're often together, okay? They're together. Forgiveness and grief are together. So is forgiveness an aspect of grief, would you say? Or is grief an aspect of forgiveness? Ooh, ooh the life coach in me is waking up and sparkling. And I feel like you should get your journal out. <laughs> is grief an aspect of forgiveness or is forgiveness an attribute of grief? What is the answer to that? It depends, yes. It depends on the situation or circumstance and the people who are involved. And the path up to this point, she says, what has led you here? What has led you here? To this now moment, what has led you here? She says, grief is a state, like a, a state, um, like something where you can have awareness and you know the different stages of grief and that kind of a thing. And it's not just from a death of a person, a family member, something like that, or a pet, et cetera. But from, it could be from a job, from a relationship, from just a discovery about, like maybe about your parents that you didn't know or something that comes to light that, and, and even that you grieve the loss of what you thought it was, but it's not. And then you look back and you go, wait, what was that? And so it causes you to question yourself in reality, right? Wait, what was that? I thought it was this, but knowing this, I know now, what was that? Mm, she says, mm. <laughs> nobody's going to believe me if I say that. Nobody's going to believe me that. Nobody's going to believe it's you if I say what, you, what, what just came through to me. You said it's a, it's a royal mind fuck. That's what it is. A little mind fuck. <laughs> oh God. Nobody's gonna believe that, but it's funny and it's true. <laughs> A little mind fuck. The audacity to attempt to understand human beingness. Oh, she says, shocking. Shocking. You're human. Shocking, isn't it? Quite shocking, I'm human, imagine that. Oh. <laughs> I love your candor, it's great. She's awesome, oh, and her eyes are gorgeous, super blue, gorgeous blue eyes. Ooh, nice, okay. So the grief piece, okay, so la, 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 la. Mm. The state of grief, okay, there's a perspective about, and then the awareness comes when you recognize it's a state or a status. And you move through the phases of this. And she says, um, it's, not, it's not linear. She's not showing me it going like this. It's more of like a cycle and stuff. And you kind of move around. On, it's slide. You slide. It's a sliding scale grief is. And she says, it shall result in forgiveness. At multiple stages of grief, there will be the opportunity to shed and clear the emotional the emotional." I'm not saying trauma. What is that word you're saying? It's not state. It's like emotional suffering. You can clear that at multiple stages of the state of the status of grief. You can clear that is part of, part of, that is a portion, thank you, portion of forgiveness. And it's not, she says, it's not as though there's forgiveness and then it wipes everything out. Everything just goes away. 
like a like she shows me a broom, a little broom, little broom. Like she says the like um the breadcrumbs on the table. There's like this thing that you put and it looks like a dustpan. She's showing me this metal thing and then you scrape the the breadcrumbs off the table like that. She's like, forgiveness is the bread. Mm -hmm. It's the bread of life. And she says, what's left after there's been like turmoil or turbulent time, like an event or a realization or something like that, what's left is the crumbs. And it's me it looks messy, it's gritty. And sometimes you can't actually see them, but you can feel it and it's not smooth, things aren't smooth. And she says, then you have an opportunity for more, more forgiveness. So can you describe forgiveness for us then? If grief is the state and forgiveness is part of that? Well, forgiveness, she said, forgiveness can result in grief. You can feel sad and misplaced and out of sorts and off your off your kilter. Is that a thing? Off your kilter, off kilter, off your kilter. When you are attempting to provide relief for yourself, you will, oh God, she's saying the ultimate source of self-love is forgiveness. Okay, I'm out. I'm done with this one. I'm so done with this one. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? The ultimate act, self-love. And she says, you've heard it all. You've heard all the rhetoric. It is not, you know, all the self-help things, the lingo. She's like, you know all this. That it's not um, a one-time thing, forgiveness. It's not someone else changing or, or, or honoring you or, or coming back and trying to correct, heal the harm or correct the wrong. She says, correct the wrong. I say, heal the harm. That's how healers talk. Heal the harm. She says, correct the wrong. You can't. The damage is done. And there is a loss, a sense of loss. And whether it be a physical loss, a human loss, or an emotional one in a relationship, like, like a trust or betrayal, or there's just so much forgiveness is not easy to come by. But once you get to a place where you recognize that it's you on you, on your heart, she says it's weighing on your heart because it's you pushing against the grief. Oh my God, brilliant. It's you pushing on yourself. Forgiveness is you pushing against the grief in your heart. That's why it's needed. Yeah. Yeah, you've heard me say that. That's why it's needed. Can you forgive yourself? She says, I've made plenty of mistakes in my lifetime. She's saying forgiveness is not one of those things. It's not. And she's saying, I grieved the loss of what I thought my life would look like and what it should be and the duty and the honor and the sacrifice. And she says, suffering, causing oneself to continue suffering when you are truly the one that has the ability, she says, the hand on the door. God, she's showing me a cage metaphor and I really don't want to have that one right now. The hand on the door of a cage and she opens it. She says, when it's your hand, that is the key to your freedom. Then you are left with the understanding and awareness that You will need to forgive yourself so that you can allow yourself to be whole and complete once again. Is that possible then with grief? We're talking about grief and forgiveness and forgiveness and grief. Is it possible to be whole again when you have such a devastating loss or when you've been so wronged? How can you forgive and what like, 
Is that even possible? Is forgiveness even possible? And she says, sometimes it's not. It is a personal, very deeply personal thing, and it's profound, and it will save you from the heartache that you have, from the heartbreak that you are struggling with, from the awareness of the grief, the process, the status that you are in, from anger to sadness to bitterness to resentment to... She says, mm -hmm. the need to be right is connected to wrong. So the thing that has been done wrong to you or the perception of the wrong that has been inflicted upon you is the very thing that holds you in the grief and the pain. Because you accept it as wrong and then it cannot be catalyzed or used to promote self-acceptance and the ultimate love. To land in love, you must allow yourself to let go of wrong and focus on what is needed for you to restore your trust in yourself, to restore your feeling of safety, to restore your belief in yourself. It's not so black and white. And when it's pushed into a state of this or this, and there's no in between, she says there's no, there's no in between, then it it supports or promotes the ideal is the idyllic, what are you saying? It promotes the idea that. When you, somehow there's like a rightness about holding on to what's wrong, what's been wrong. There's like, when you are aware of the wrong or what's wrong or what's been wrong, what's been done, that's bad, then you are super aware of your goodness, of what is right for you. So when something bad happens, you reaffirm what's right, what's right, what's good, what you want. It just gets you closer to this deeper awareness and understanding of yourself and what's right in alignment for you is kind of how she's explaining this. It's like, um, but when you hold on to the wrong, it shows you, it like amplifies the right. And she says, you have to be willing to let them both go, to let them both go, to, to recognize that there are two ends. Yes. But you live in the middle, you live in the center, which is alignment, which is now, which is what is happening now. When you hold on to what's wrong, it attracts more of the the, the sadness and it messes, she's like, it's messing with the grief process. And it, it puts you back into anger and then sadness and resentment. And then this, this, these feelings that are, that are all wrapped up in all this stuff. And it keeps the grief process going and going and going because all you need to do is lighten up on the energy of wrong and right. And just recognize that it's this, this huge opposite ends of the spectrum, right and wrong. And the truth is alignment, which is in the center, which is where you are, which is where forgiveness is. She says, this path is not easy. It's not easy. And then she says, um, it's the heart's way. It is the heart's way. She says, when you recognize a wrong so much, then you focus on the wrongness, the wrongdoing. 
that's a form of judgment, criticism that turns into self-sabotage and avoidance and detachment to life. And she says, she acknowledges the fact that some very horrific things happen to people. And that is hard to imagine how someone could forgive, but it's also the way back to peace in your center. It's like, it's how you find peace. And she shows me a white dove. It's how you find peace. Yeah. And it's okay to grieve. And that's in your own time. And she says, yes, it changes you. Life changes you. It affects you. She says, I thought it many times I had lost my mind. And I'm sure that was written about many times as well. But she says, when you, when you were in a situation, as was I, which is so public, you know, people will believe what they will believe. And for me, the forgiveness piece came from not doing things sooner, not taking the action I know was right in all, she says, in all, and like she's pointing to me, Bridget says in alignment, <laughs> right for me sooner, because then um, my children would have known their mother much more free a free being. <sighs> yeah. So forgiveness is the way to freedom. From the pain, from the shadow of what has happened to you, from the hate of others or the anger or the actions of others. Forgiveness is freedom. And grief is natural. She says grief is natural. It is. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not going crazy. You're not losing your mind. You will not be, and then she's like bonkers. Not bonkers. <laughs> what? What? Bonkers. Who says that? Come on. All right. Thank you. Compassion is the energy of that pink loving energy coming into the heart chakra. And I hope that you here at Above Life Channel can feel and sense that right now with the energetics of former Princess Diana, the Lady Diana. Mm -hmm. hope you can feel that. May it soften the edges of the heart and as well the mind and the critical eye and the self-sabotaging behavior that can occur when you're in a state of grief. Forgiveness is freedom. Thank you so much, lovely. Lovely to see you again. Thank you. And thank you, Above Life Channel, for being here. I'm Bridget. It's a pleasure to be able to connect and channel for you with you today. Have you being part of Above Life Channel on YouTube? I hope we've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope, and inspired you to live your life. It's your life after all. And you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.